What's going on everyone? This is Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, Electro introduce you to Wear, which is a wearable XR tech startup who built an XR device called the Touch Diver. This device is a haptic solution that brings a sense of touch to AR and virtual reality with the help of multiple tactile finger feelings like forces, vibration, texture feelings, and thermal, which means that it can give you a cold or hot sensation on your fingers. I know this sounds super cool, right? But the best thing about it is that people can feel the tactile properties of virtual surfaces and materials like wood, plastic, stone, and textiles. Also, the stiffness, however, is sufficient to feel the pressure of objects being touched regarding shapes and design. In addition, thermal cues work promptly to deliver temperature on any object. The best part is that these points of a strand have very low latency and can be combined to provide users with the optimum emotional experience. The Proto is a plug and play device and the SDK enables the integration of tactile cues in projects developed with engines such as Unity and Unreal Game Engine. Well, with all that said, let's take a look at how the device looks like. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the device. So this is what I got with the Word and the box looks Pretty, pretty cool. Couple of things in here, there's gonna be the USB dangle that you're gonna get to connect to, to the PC. There's also this adapter, which is gonna work especially for the Oculus Quest 2 devices, Oculus Quest 1, and then any type of controller like that is going to work with this. There's also this adapter here, which basically it's for one of the HTC trackers. So this is a very common connector. And then this is gonna be the wristband that basically attaches around your wrist. So basically put it like this and then the device will attach on the top. Then on the inside, we also have the, these are different adapter snaps for different fingers. So if you have, you know, if you need a different size for some of the thin balls, then you can use some of these ones. This is gonna be the actual control unit. It has the HDMI mini connectors in here. So this basically is not bow, it's not back in. And then this is what it's going to transmit the, basically it'll heat up if, you know, you have the temperature high, it'll cool down if the temperature is low. So there's only three fingers and you won't really notice that you only have three fingers once you start the experience, which is which is pretty crazy. There's also a charger in here that comes with this and it's a USB charger that connects to the unit. So we got a couple of USB here. There's also a USB cable, it's pretty standard. Here's your power. And there's also multiple different adapters in here. Like if you want it, if you live in the US, it's gonna be something like this, right? And it basically snaps just right in here. So it's pretty easy to get it to snap. And if you wanna get it out, you can just push this and then you can just get that out. And if you need a different adapter, there's also some of them in here. This is the one with the, with the holes. I'm not an electrician, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what kind of adapters these are. All I know is that this gives you power, and these are just for different, you know, universal adapters. All right, so to set it up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a wristband first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it set up the way that it's comfortable to me. And basically the letters are gonna be aligning so that I can read it. Then we can grab this unit. If you notice, this is gonna be for the thumb. And then these are gonna be for the other two fingers. So it's gonna go ahead and snap that. And it basically uses a magnet so I can easily take it out. It's actually pretty, pretty steady. And then I can put my thumb finger here. I can also put this finger here and then also my middle finger. So we're gonna have three fingers and then Normally what they do is they close these two. And by the time that you start the experience, you're not gonna notice that you only have three fingers. And then the next thing that we'll do, which I probably should have done before putting this on, is you can snap the controller. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna get this cord through here. And then I'll just basically just, you know, push it in until we have the controller in place. And something like that. You can also tie it up if it's too, you know, if it's not tight. I think this is gonna work. All right guys, so the next thing that I wanna show you is how to connect this actual device to the dangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open an app which is called the middleware. And as soon as I open it, it's gonna say that the dangle is actually not connected and that's because I have it sitting right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this to my computer. And as soon as you connect it, it's gonna say that it's connected and that's because I also install the drivers and I'm gonna be putting the information on how to do that in the description of this video. The next thing that I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and put these on my finger. So I'm gonna do this finger right here, also the index finger, and also my thumb so that you have 
something like this. As soon as it detects the device is powered on, which it is because I already powered it on by using the power button, it's gonna tell you that you can start it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Then it's gonna say that it's running. I'm gonna be using this UI test panel to show you and you're gonna be able to hear some of the signals that we're sending. So right now I have the thumb. So if I were to change the force here, you're gonna hear that noise. And that is actually changing and, and sending a force to, to this finger. If I wanted to do that on the, maybe on the middle finger, we can also change the temperature. You won't be able to hear anything on the temperature, but it's actually heating up. You can also change some of these values to apply different forces. All right, guys, so if you want to get this working, I'm gonna show you what you need to do in Unity. It's pretty easy. So I'm gonna go into build settings, player settings, and go into install the XR plugin management. And this is using 2021.3.a. I'm going to be putting all the different supported Unity versions in the description of this video. Once this gets set up, we're going to be also installing the Oculus plugin and also the Word plugin. So it's gonna go ahead and go into Oculus here. Okay, so we have the plugin management. We have the also the plugin provider. Then I have this scene also added. The last thing that you need to do is you need to go into a package manager and we're gonna be adding a package that I downloaded from their website. So if we go into here, I already downloaded it to this directory and then just double click on the package.json and it'll install all the different components that we're gonna need. Okay, and then they come with a samples. I'm gonna be downloading the simple temperature and it looks like I already had it. So it's gonna go ahead and override it. I think I have everything in here. So let's go ahead and close it. Go into haptics demo. The controller is required because it's what's going to connect to the actual USB dongle. And then left and, and right hand, you can also add them. They're not required, but this is just a demo that allows you to, to use those. And then if you use the simple temperature and we go here, you can see that this one doesn't have the, the actual hands. And then that's because they're basically using this to be kind of like a tracker. They have that worked. The ball tracking object and it's assigned to the right hand side and the attuation point is set to the index. So, and in here, what I need to do is we're gonna go down here into the SDK and they have a couple of prefabs that if you want to get things going, this is really all you need to do, just drag the controller and then you can drag the left hand and you can also drag the right hand. On the left hand, I did, I believe, let me do 0 0.271. That way it's a little bit offset on the left side. The height, I did nine, let's see, 0 0.937. So let me go ahead and do that. And then I think on the Z axis, I ended up doing negative. I have these numbers in here that I, I am trying to make sure that I remember. And if we go back, you're gonna see that what we're gonna need to copy these values in here. And this is just based on their examples. I just copy some of those numbers so that everything is, uh, is assigned properly. And let me make sure that I do that here. And then I'll do that also on the Z axis so that we can we can uh, get everything set up. And this one is actually zero. So that way we have one on, you know, their space uh, within, between each other. And then the next thing that we can do here is I'm gonna go into prefabs. I'm gonna be adding the floor. This is a prototype floor that I added. And then the actual, an actual table that we can use. And then the other thing that we can also do is if you look at the examples, they have a touchable cube here. And there's also another things in here that you can use. The one that I'm gonna be adding is gonna be, basically gonna be adding this one right here. We just put it so that we are kind of like touching the table, but not intersecting, something like that. But if you notice in here, if I wanted to have this one be really hot, all I have to do is just check this and then basically change it all the way up. And we can do one maybe that it's, it's cold, so I can just change it all the way down. Then I'm gonna create another one in here that is going to have maybe like middle, maybe a little bit hot, but not too bad. The stiffness, we can also increase it. And then maybe the texture in here, we can say that this is gonna be uh, aluminum fine mesh slow. They have different, uh, basically textures that they simulate by using the technology that they built on the thin balls. So what I'm gonna do, this one is gonna be leather. So we can say that this is leather. And then we can just add one more and I think that will be plenty for us to be able to test it. We can do silver oak. And so we have different examples in here. 
that we can test with. All right guys, so I got the device connected. One thing that I forgot to do is we also need to convert the camera here and I'm gonna convert it to an XR rig. Once you do that, what I'm going to do is I need to map the controller. So I'm gonna create an empty object for that. So it's gonna be left controller and then we can make this one right controller. Then what we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the track pose driver and I'm gonna be doing on this one, it's gonna be the left controller. So we'll just do left controller, leave everything as it is. And then I'll do the same thing in here for the right controller, except I'm gonna change it to be the right controller. Then on each of the hands, we need to map them to the right controller. So the tracking source here is going to be the left controller. Then they have these offsets, presets, which are really helpful because that way we don't have to worry about how they're mapping that information. And then I'll do the same thing here on the right controller. And then I'll assign it to the Oculus right. Let's go ahead and test it out. So I can still close my hand, everything is tracking, and I can grab the cube. And I feel the pinballs actually doing this job and also they're getting and changing temperature. So in this case, this one is really, really cold and I feel like it's really, really cold. In this case, this one is, is hot, so I can feel like the three of my fingers are, are kind of getting pretty, pretty hot. Additional technical specifications for this device is that the platform requires a USB dangle PC in a middleware, which is a desktop application that you can download from the Microsoft Store. Finger tracking is integrated by using Thimble sensors. There's also an external reference for wrist tracking on XR, which means that you will need an XR controller or HTC Vive tracker, camera system, and other different trackers. The touch driver, from my point of view, is amazing, and the device is a great way to provide unique tactile feelings However, I did run into a few issues when trying to get the device to connect. The light indicator on the controller unit is not very intuitive. Once in a while, I would attempt to connect it to power, to power it on, and then it would turn on and off, but I wasn't really sure if it was charging or not. I even got to a point where no lights would come up, making it look like it wasn't functional at all. However, even though I had this problem, I was able to read the manual. I found out how to reset the device by using a pin. Once I pushed the pin in, the device reset and everything was working right after that. On the positive side, the SDK is great. It's super easy to use. I love how I can set different parameters to various objects and I can get things ready by simply dragging and dropping prefabs when using the Unity game engine. There is also a great way to apply different effects through the code by simply instantiating a touch effects instance and passing temperature, force, and texture parameters. Well, all of this is cool, but how can you purchase a touch diver device today? And what is the actual price of this amazing and innovative device? Well, currently you can request a touch diver by going to the link that I'm gonna be putting below. And according to their website, it ships within six days and four to six weeks for pre-orders when the product is out of stock. The device is also shipping to the US, Canada, and Europe. The price of one touch diver, it's about 4,500 USD and 8,000 USD for a pair. This includes the SDK, it includes updates, and also a dedicated onboarding team member from the company wear it. You may think that the price of the device like this may sound too high, but technology like this can actually save people's life. Imagine having a doctor, a physician, trained with such realism that a real world operation can feel just like a training session. What about in an industrial type training where attention to care and details is critical for performing a specific task. Even on entertainment, you could now have tactile feelings of what touching a dinosaur feels like and see it right in VR or augmented reality. So what is the roadmap for future enhancements on this device and the company as a whole? Well, they're working on finger tracking improvements. There's also a porting of a standalone MetaQuest, MetaQuest 2, Pico, ML2, and HoloLens, which is gonna support this device. Haptic texture editor. There's also a second device generation, which they're working on. So tell me what you think about the device. Would you consider using this for your own VR or AR experience. Leave that information in the comments below and let me know. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because that's gonna allow me to bring you a lot more videos and also it's gonna notify you when I bring new videos about XR. Thank you very much guys.